Station Adventist Reflections. Now, to discuss character building ideas, here is your host, Dr. Denzi. Hi family, this week is week two from this new season and this week's title is From Jerusalem to Babylon. Today we focus on ideas based on the experience found in Daniel chapter one. And I would like to thank my dear wife for producing these tunes that you hear in the background. I really appreciate them and enjoy them and I hope that you do too. Today I am very excited because as you know, we spoke about last week that We'll have a new guest for this next season. And as we talk about the book of Daniel, I'm very excited to introduce to you Zenny. Zenny, how is it going today? Well, here in Brisbane, it's an overcast. I'm doing <laughs> well. Um, it's, the, it's the last day of 2019. What a day. It Imagine that. It is. It is um, an amazing day. It's been a bit of a tough year for us. Uh, well, as you know, our listeners do know that I've been uh, recording from Mexico as I'm on a bit of a, a trip away. But I know that in Australia, we've been having a bit of a tough year with the droughts and the fires and the heat and all that. And we are not, not out of woods mm. uh, then. It's... Um, Uh, Victoria is in high, on high alert today. Also, um, New South Wales, the same. Queensland is not too bad today, but otherwise, this year has been a year of drought and fires, no yeah, doubt about my that. My oldest daughter told me yesterday, I believe, that she saw in the news that another firefighter passed away. And so, True. our thoughts and prayers are definitely with everybody who is volunteering or not volunteering, everybody who is out there. And, and facing these situations that are quite difficult for sure. Mm. Yes. So, Zenny, on the side of today, I share with our listeners about how a new guest will come for these next 12 episodes. And I am very sure that they would like to know who you are. And um, I don't know, maybe I could share about how we met, etc. But I would like them to know from you who you really are. So, can you tell us a little bit about you? Okay, I can do that. And then I, I, as I speak, I'll probably test your knowledge. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> I'm a fail. <laughs> okay, okay, go ahead. Look, uh, yeah, I, I was born in, uh, in the country of, of yeah. Bosnia and Herzegovina. Well, when I, was, when, when I was born far back in 1965, it was one country, by the, it was a different mm -hmm. country by the name Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. But as you know, in 1990s, Things changed due to a civil war that took place in that in that mm -hmm. in that place, and um, so I spent my uh, my primary school years right. in in Bosnia, and then I moved to Croatia in 1980s, where I mm -hmm. uh, where I was uh, in high school, um, an Adventist high school. And I spent most beautiful seven years in Croatia, uh, Marushevic. And uh, after high school, I studied theology, completed theology. But then after that, uh, in 1988, I actually got married. And, uh, and from there, both my wife and I, we moved to England. I wanted to continue further studies in theology, which, which I did. And uh, stayed in England for uh, for six years. It was a great experience. I I, I completed uh, further studies in theology and did my masters in Old Testament and did a double major in English literature. So those were the six years in England. After England, I moved uh, and lived for one year in Germany in Stuttgart in Germany, and yeah. spent a year there. And basically, after that, um, I was praying and wondering where I'm mm -hmm. going to end up because the war was still oh, uh, wow. taking place in in former Yugoslavia. And so we came to Australia, applied for work uh, here in Australia. And uh, within four months, I got a call 
and uh, and the rest is history. I've been now in 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 Queensland, in Brisbane for the last twenty four years. So I've been a church pastor for the last twenty four years. So that's a bit of a brief bio of mine. Oh wow, time has gone quite quickly. I think when I think about it. I knew bits and pieces about that, so you did test my knowledge that I didn't know everything. I'm married to Svetlana. We have three kids. I have two two boys. One is 24, one is 20, and I have a girl. She's uh, she's 15. Awesome. I remember when we first met uh, a while back, I think, um, now that you mentioned that your oldest boy is 24, that's what took me aback the most. <laughs> it, it's... Uh, yeah, and then I think about well, my oldest now is going to be 15 in a couple of days, so definitely time has gone oh, by. I can't believe that. I can't believe that. Wow. <laughs> wow. wow. I know. I know. Now, Zeni, before we go on this, we know about what you do. You're a pastor, and, and um, God, I'm sure, has led you in different places, and obviously you are where you are supposed to be, and you have answered the call, and I think that that's something amazing. If you were to pick about, and it doesn't have to be to do with what you do for a living, but it's about who you are really. But if you were to pick about three things that you are most passionate about, what would that be? Well, let me try to put it maybe even in order. My greatest passion, and actually it was born when I was a, probably around 19 years right. old when, and, and when I experienced what I, what, what, in Christian jargon, we call a, a, a conversion. I fell in love with with the Word. I fell in love with the Bible. Um, first, it was a prayer, but then after that, it became the study of the Bible. And that that passion never left me. Uh, and uh, even until now, that's one of my greatest passions. I have a great passion for getting and engaging with the Word and getting deep into the Word. Um, and uh, and uh, when I was still a student of, uh, of theology, mm. not even knowing whether I will become a pastor or not, um, but I said to myself, if I ever do, Mm. One of my greatest desires is that uh, people will be the the people of the word. Nice, and uh, and that that the word and, and 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 relationship with God that is established through through understanding the word of God uh, would be something that I would like to instill within those that I come to pastor to. Mm. So that that's my that's my first passion, the word. The next one is is sharing it, sharing that word, sharing that word, especially with people who are non Christians. Um, awesome. And uh, I had a lot of a lot of opportunities to do that, both within a church as well as outside of a church, um, in Bible studies as well as in. Uh, uh, evangelism, going to Mongolia, going to um, Ukraine was another place where I went. And so, yeah, sharing that word with others and sharing the gospel of Christ is 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 very special. A third thing is is look engaging with the community and engaging with the community where people need people's needs are is is an, another passion of mine and. The first point of contact is very often is need based. People are not prepared to hear either word or even the gospel before they, they, they their needs are met. So uh, mingling with people, meeting people's needs, either one on one basis or in organized programs, is something that I'm a passionate about as well so yeah those, those, those things so so personal engagement with the word sharing the word and, and and engaging with people within communities are those the three things that i would say yeah are my passions it sounds to me that um, you're in the right 
uh, place position uh, in the right ministry or career, if you want to call it, for the passions that you have. So that, that is good. Um, uh, that tells me that uh, in somehow, in some ways, you're fulfilled, fulfilling those passions. And, and I know that you have so far done a good job. So thanks for sharing that. I appreciate it. So I think this passion that you have of studying the Word and of sharing it, something that will be relevant for us. And as you know, we're starting this new cycle. And now we're talking about lesson number two. The first one was just an intro, but now we're going to be going chapter by chapter in some of these experiences on the book of Daniel. And as I was preparing for this, I came to this um, quote in the, um, the Sabbath School app from the book Desire of Ages, and it's in page 382. And I would like to read it. I would like to share it as we have some relevant questions related to, um, to this episode. And it says this, Day by day, God instructs his children. By the circumstances of the daily life, he's preparing them to act their part upon the wider stage to which his providence has appointed them. It is the issue of the daily test that determines their victory or defeat in life's great crisis. And I think this is quite relevant because the book starts with a bit of a crisis, I think, the book of Daniel. And so I would like us to unpack this, uh, this scene of this crisis that sometimes, you know, people like Daniel, like, like God's people, like you and I, like our listeners who might be wondering about who this God is or who might already know who God is and they're still going through some of these crises. And then perhaps we can move on to Daniel and his friends and th that experience that they're having. Mm -hmm. So in Daniel chapter one, we have this scene of these people that go um, taken captive. In the first verses, we have this king of Babylon, right? Surrounding Jerusalem, basically taking captive everybody, even sacred things from the temple. And and this is the thing for me in my, in my mind. We, we knew that this was going to happen. And I think some of the people who were studying the word, like you like to do that, they will have known that this was coming because it was prophesied somehow. And, and so yes. they were listening to this and they were looking around and people were not getting repented. They were not confessing. They were not changing and I might be wrong, and, and I'm not a theologian, but um, as I'm thinking of this, it sounds to me that there was some collateral damage that was about to happen in this process. It sounds to me that there were some good people out there who were faithful, and yet they suffered. Look, uh, this chapter, chapter one of, of the book of Daniel is about four young people uh, who were, you could almost say, victims of life circumstances for which they were themselves were not responsible. It is, it is their moms and dads and their grand, grandfathers with whom the prophet Jeremiah was striving. And for, for days, months and years, he was trying to bring them back to God and things were not working out. And, and actually Jeremiah said, this is what's going to happen to you. So you have this Teenagers, so maybe maybe very young young men, four of them who who paid the price for 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 the sins, if you will, of their of their fathers. So the question really is: Are they going to to uh, play a victimhood card, or are they going to position themselves in life circumstances in such a way where they can be they can still live a meaningful, godly life? Okay, so what I'm hearing is that, is that they were in a difficult situation. And even though they were, in some ways, some of their rights or freedoms were taken away, they still had a choice in the position they were in. Okay. Yes, and it was tough. It was tough. No, imagine, uh, I mean, imagine uh, a foreign army comes, yeah, surrounds the city of Jerusalem, Mm -hmm. And they are besieged for days and months, mm. probably without food. And eventually, uh, eventually, the bridge, the, the, the city is breached. Yeah. Uh, the army uh, does a carnage. Many people killed. The king taken captive. Uh, a lot of bloodshed. Yeah. 
and uh, and then these guys are taken uh, as captives and, and and slaves, pretty much, and for hundreds and hundreds of kilometers, they will go on foot from Jerusalem all the way to Babylon. Well, I mean, what a what a traumatic experience! What a traumatic experience! Actually, it reminds me of of Joseph, when you think about it. Many, many theologians have compared Joseph and Joseph and Daniel as being very similar in character and even in right. outward life circumstances. Um, Joseph's journey from, from, uh, from his father's house uh, all the way to Egypt is kind of very similar to Daniel's journey from Babylon, uh, from, from Jerusalem all the way to Babylon. And it seems to me both of them on the way mm. had an aha moment, had this wow. spiritual conversion moment that really uh, uh, determined where their lives were, were heading. And, and in the case of Joseph, what happened on the way to Egypt and for, uh, for, for Daniel, what happened on the way to Babylon, I think determined who they were becoming and uh, this, which is quite interesting. And they were definitely not going to be victims. They were going to uh, make choices that will catapult them into really significant people um, that you and I are going to talk about one day, you know, centuries later. Yeah, yeah. This is quite interesting because as you're speaking, uh, sharing with us about it, I don't think I have put much thought to the idea that it was through their experience that they came to where they were. Uh, I, I can I can see that about Joseph, but I never sat back about think about Daniel, and it kind of makes some sense now that you mention it. What I'm saying is that I never thought of when when I think about it, I think of you know these guys. They all had it right, and then they continue to be right. But it sounds that as if the experience of the trials brought them to a point when they say, hey, you know, what are you going to do? What choice are you going to make? Um, what are you going to hold on to now that it's getting tougher, the toughest thing that you ever experienced, the, the greatest trauma you're going through? And the irony of it seemed that God is absent. That's when the conversion experience happened, which is quite amazing because look, look at even verse 1 because it says that God gave King Jehoiakim in other words, there's kind of a, an almost an absence of God. Even even the articles of of the temple taken can, can into the the temple of a foreign god. So there is this there is this not only conquering of nation, but one god is above the other god. You know, so there is this hopeless and helpless situation. And it seems to me that when 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 they were all at the bottom of it, rock bottom of it. That's when Daniel is having this spiritual conversion experience. That's what I think happened, really. It is amazing. I, I wonder what happens into the mind of somebody when, as you mentioned, God seems to be absent, and yet you convert to that God that doesn't seem to be there. I wonder what goes through the human mind um, when these situations take place. It's it's kind of an oxymoron, isn't it? It's It's... Yeah, remember in, in his most famous sermon on the mount, talks about right. the entry into the kingdom of God. And yes. the starting point of the entry into the kingdom mm. is the crisis. It's a crisis point. Blessed, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who cry. Yeah. And that's exactly what Daniel mm. was going through. That's exactly what Joseph was going through. That's exactly what you and I typically go through. And most people have this kind of a conversion experience then and there, you know, through through life's crisis, you know? Wow. I can just think, you know, as you're sharing this stuff as well, I can think of God, even though in my synapse and God being all the way through this, almost as he's saying, hey, you know, Maybe your forefathers, maybe your, you know, your great grandparents, your parents, as you mentioned, they have messed up. Um, I'm going to take you here and it's going to be a hard experience. I'm going to be there with you along the way. And I know that there will be people who will choose the right thing and they will get the benefits that I am seeking for them. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
and, 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 yes. and, and that makes me very excited because you and I can have that, right? Like, um, I mm. like the author of the lesson because in there it talks about the idea that we might not see it a lot of the times, but the whole book is really Christ-centered as well. So God is yes. there even though it appears to not be there. Yes, wow. and and that's true wow. because at the end of a chapter, it, the, at the beginning of chapter, it says, Gay, uh, Yehoakim. But at the end of a chapter, it says that right. God gave Daniel a wisdom to understand. Uh, so he, the whole chapter is sandwiched between these gay gifts, if you will. Uh, God gives and gives them over, but God is still not absent from 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 His people, which is which is quite interesting, you know, when you look at the text itself. Yeah. But 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 the interesting thing once once they come once they come to Babylon, it seems to me that 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 spiritually uh, uh, Daniel and his friends are set. They are already determined that they are going to follow God, you know. And uh, the you could imagine that most most or let's say majority of Jews that who, who came um, would have drifted. But some, some, some determined to remain to God. But what does that faithfulness really mean? You know, when I look at the text of, when I look at chapter one, what I find is that Daniel both embraced cult also in the sand where he was not going to go uh, beyond that. Um, you would probably remember that in, in, in the book of Jeremiah, um, find that God gives instructions through Jeremiah to people who are going to end up as, as, um, as captives or inhabitants of Babylon, Jews, Yes, it says, he, yes, it says to basically embrace it. So he was telling them, look, I want you to look for the good of the city. I want you to embrace mm. and be, and be, um, be force good with what you are part of, which is quite amazing. You know, you go into Babylon mm. and you, <laughs> and almost, uh, like a default reaction to that is to reject Babylon altogether, <laughs> you know, to have this, to have this um, uh, fortress mentality, and to just barricade yourself from Babylon. But God says, "No, no, no! You are too good to look for the good of the city. You are to do everything so that the culture would would would, uh, would, would prosper." You know, which is quite amazing. And and so what you what 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 you have with with, um, with uh, with with Daniel is is exactly that he's not going into extreme of barricading himself, but he's not also embracing culture in fullness. So he, he it's quite amazing when you read it. Mm. So there is like a balance. There is like a hey, you know, I'm going to be faithful to God. He he put a line in the sin somehow but at the same time he's allowing himself to not be somebody who is like a mole somehow if it doesn't go against his god some so in in some ways mm. exactly exactly mm. and he he did that with uh, with um you know with with food as we know it and he says look i'm putting a line in the sand uh i'm not going to eat the food which was from to partake from from king's step and which was offered to king as God. Mm, so this yeah. was kind of um, almost bowing down to king as God through through food. And Daniel said, no, I'm drawing a line. There's mm. no way I'm going to do this, you know. Yeah. So he's drawing a line very clearly. So he's not to go to, to embrace the culture mm. in fullness and totally lose his identity of who, of who he is. And also good students of the Bible, those who know Hebrew, say that when their names of these foods were changed, what is really interesting that Daniel skews his Babylonian names so that because those names were the names of Babylonian gods, but he does not fully 
he skews every name. So it is not full Babylonian name with full, uh, which de- depicts the name of God. Right. But it is skewed. So he's, he's saying, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of rejecting that too. Mm. So, which is, which is quite interesting, which is quite interesting. And also in, sure. in the way he studies, when, when Daniel came to study at the Babylonian University, one of the subjects he would have was astronomy. The other one was, was uh, Babylonian language and Akkadian language. But, but as, as he studied astronomy, he, w- he would be studying astrology. So he had to distinguish between the two, what is, what is real science and what is not science, you know. So having Daniel who is clearly um, making, uh, is distinguishing between what is right and what is wrong, you know, and how far he's going to go and where he's going to draw the line in the sand, which is quite interesting. I think it is amazing, Zenny, because obviously him and his friends, as we mentioned before, they made a choice and they say, hey, you know, this is the choice we're going to do and we're going to stand by it. And I can just imagine how easy it will be for anybody. When I think about our, our generations today, I and mean, we're thinking about the people on their prime right now will be maybe the millennial generation and then you have the the Z generation coming up and all that. But yeah. how easy it will be for anybody, regardless of age, to listen to an offer coming by the king's court, by the prime minister of Australia saying, hey, you know, I want you in my cabinet or I want you to be part of the closest people who are going to give me advice somehow because I can see that you are you're pretty switched on and you're also good looking and you are whatever. Um, all you have to do is, you know, just, just, just eat this stuff and drink this stuff and, hey, you know, it's like going to the prime minister's home to eat. How easy it will be to justify it. So I, I guess, any. Um, as I think about how they did that and how we can do that, this is something I would like us to think of something pratic, practical. How could these guys do that? How can I, how can anybody who listens to this episode be able to be strong the way these guys were? Yes. Young yes. people who were attracted to, you know, having a pretty good life. They didn't have to go through the tough part. Yes, Exactly. Well, look, there is, there is no doubt that there is a huge pull when you, when you think about the temptation that um, the Daniel and his friends had once they were in Babylonian court. The world opened up to them. The comforts of the world opened up to them. The knowledge of the world opened up to them. It was so easy to slip, slide, and drift away and, and, and be people of the world, you know. And that was the whole attempt of of the Babylon, and that is to to make them into the Babylon. But it was very, very strategic what Babylonian king was doing. He was going to pretty much indoctrinate them, make them into Babylonians. Yeah, and that's you know what that that's what the young people to uh, contend with today. And and basically mm-hmm. they lose their mm-hmm. identity and who they are in God. But God, you know, God in his mercy will bring about a crisis and, uh, and, 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 and take us back to the roots and mm-hmm. uh, our relationship with him. Sometimes, you know, we, when a crisis comes, we should, not be, we should not be always saying poor this or poor that. Because that's a, very often it's, it's a blessing when we see that it happens, you know. So take the opportunities that... Um, are there in front of us sometimes? Perhaps they look tough, they look they look hard, but take them as opportunities of growth. And to maybe we could even argue test God in such a time and allow yes you to be reconnected with Him. I, I like that. Thanks for that, Zeni. Do you have any final remarks about this chapter? I mean, we could be here for a long time and talk about a lot of these things about values and principles, and we will unpack them in the future. But anything else? Well. <laughs> Well, one practical one uh, for, you know, as I think of church, as I think of church members, um, there is always this temptation either to pull away from the world or to be too immersed in the world, you know, and to lose our identity. And for fear that we will lose our identity, we Mm. withdraw ourselves all Mm. all together. True. We have this fortress mentality. And none of those you you find with Daniel. None of those you find with Daniel. Mm. 
he remained faithful to God. He mm. became the leader of the country, but he never compromised for the good of society. People looked to him. So it is possible of God able to be in Babylon. You just reminded me of how Jesus said it himself when he came, you know. He said, we are not of the world, but I send you there because we have something to do here. And and if, if we are not here, if we... We won't be able to do what we are supposed to do, and, and we won't enjoy it either. Yeah, you know, and uh, this is really, really important for us to 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 to, uh, to understand. And we are tempted either or one of those two extremes to go to, you know. Well, thanks for that, Zeni. Yeah, welcome. Well, this is it, family. I hope that you enjoy this episode. If you have any comments or questions and anything you can send them through facebook instagram twitter or even the podbean app whatever you listen to your podcast you can send a review remember that reviews allow people to know about the podcast and also share the blessings if you know of anybody who would you like us to invite here for us zenny and i to interact with just let us know as well And remember, you listen to the Adventist Reflections podcast, which is your podcast. And I'm Dr. Dancy, and today I choose to love God, seeking to recognize that I'm dependent on Him. And I want to be not separating myself from God, but neither to be a mole in the world, but rather be for God, giving Him glory in the world that He sends me to serve. What about you? Remember to subscribe to this podcast, like it, share it, hashtag it, comment, and find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and Tumblr as Adventist Reflections. God bless you.